record on the computer. Okay, great. Hi, again, everybody, if you just popped on, hello. Um, this session now is the intro to the take-home assignment you'll be doing for Career Lab by Caitlin. Outside, sorry, kids, am I right? Anyway, Caitlin, I was gonna introduce you as Caitlin Greffley and I see your name in Zoom is still Greffley. Are you still Caitlin Greffley? Oh no, man. I <laughs> I am socially changing it to fellow tar, but I uh, legally, who knows? All right. Well, this is Caitlin. She's one of my favorite <laughs> people of all times as well. Um, before we get into this session, I just want to do a quick walkthrough like I did in the last session, but in case somebody watches this recording and not the other one. One sec. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen real quick just to walk you through where you should be at in your career lab journey in case you didn't catch it on the last one. So let me share my screen. This one, share. Okay, so again, we all have this career lab repo with the schedule of what we're working on. Um, if you haven't already, you should have your technical and mock interviews scheduled with your mentor. If you haven't done that, do it now. If you need help with it or if you can't coordinate with your mentor, just let me know. I'm happy to run them myself if we can't work something out with that mentor. Um, so. You can see we are here on Sunday. We just saw Chris's How to Rock the Technical interview, and we're moving on now to Caitlin's intro to the take-home assignment you'll be doing for Career Lab. So you'll complete this take-home assignment we're about to talk to, send it off to your technical mock interviewer so that you can use it during your technical mock interview this week. You'll also have your job fit mock interview. And then on Thursday, we'll have two sessions for the first time ever of the Watch Our Mentors interview each other. The first session at 10 a.m. Pacific, is a technical interview with a uh, kind of React JavaScript celebrity, Dan Abramoff. Um, and then the second one will be later in the afternoon Pacific time where Andrew will be doing a job interview on me. I'm going to kind of like rewind my experience and come at that interview as if Collab Lab was sort of the only developer thing I'd done. And then there will be a technical interview uh, with April interviewing Lewis. So check out both of them, come to both of them if you can. If not, they will be recorded for you. Uh, and then we'll celebrate all the awesome work you did. Okay, so stopping my screen and share on that, passing it over to Caitlin to talk about your take home assignment you'll be doing here. Yeah, hi y'all. So good to be back. Hi Stacey, thanks for having me hi. back. Of um, course, anytime. Please come back. <laughs> I'm back. Well, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am going to chat a little bit about take-home assignments in general, um, and then also what y'all will be working on. So I will start by sharing my screen. Okay. Let me move some stuff around. Can y'all see the slide deck? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so, First, we're going to talk about what is a take-home assignment, um, how you complete one, why you complete one. Um, we'll talk about the challenge that Collab Lab does um, that you'll be working on, and then some tips and strategies for working through it. And I'll stop a couple times for questions, and then we'll do questions at the end as well. So um, what is a take-home challenge? So this is one of the ways that a company uh, might test your technical skills, technical and other skills. I think there's a lot that can be tested with take-home challenges. I will, I'll preface this a little bit with, I probably should have like introduced myself. Here we go, I'm gonna introduce myself. So I'm, <laughs> I'm Kaylin, I did Collab Lab originally like two and a half years ago and have been working as a developer ever, ever since. And I really credit a lot of getting my first job to Collab Lab and we didn't even have Korea Lab back then. And this is so helpful. I feel like it's such a great tool for y'all. Um, right now, I, I actually just got a new job like three weeks ago. Um, so I actually did a lot of technical interviews recently, um, combination of like live coding sessions and take home challenges. Um, and I personally love the take home challenge. I think um, there's a lot of pressure. Um, and for me, and I know I'm, I'm not totally alone in this anxiety in a live coding session. And I think when there's a take home uh, challenge, it gives you time to like breathe process and kind of approach it 
how you will. And also like, I think it's really important that you have time to like maybe start, um, start coding, writing comments, whatever, and then walk away, take a breath and even come back to it the next day, like get a good night's sleep. I think that that's like one of the big advantages of a take home. Um, anyway, so I love them. I've done them recently. I will be happy to answer questions about uh, my specific experience as well. Um, so yeah, it can be a way to show off your show off your coding skills. Um, I I love the idea that they should be short, one to four hours. Um, I would be honest, in my experience, they have mostly not been short. Um, the one that I did for the company that I just got hired at was, in theory, eight to ten hours, but it was also paid. Um, I got paid four hundred dollars for that time, and anyone who completes it, whether you make it on to the next round or not um, was paid for that time, which I thought was amazing. Um, in full transparency, I think I spent about 20 hours on that project, um, partially because I have always worked or often worked in React and this was in Vue. And so I had to learn a bit of a new framework at the same time. Um, but I have had some that are shorter and I think that's great. I think they should be shorter. Um, I just know, know your own capacity and um, ask up front like how long they expect you to take on it and then kind of reflect on that as well. I know for Collab Lab, um, Stacy and the rest of y'all feel pretty strongly about, I think it's a two hour time limit or about um, on that, that and that we really want you to spend that two hours. And if you're not like wherever you're at in the process, that's when you can like reach out to someone and say like, hey, like I'm not as far as I thought I was, like, can we talk about how to move forward? Or, you know, if you're close to done, spend another half hour, cool. I mean, I would I would think, um, but I think when you're totally on your own and it's, you know, it's a company that you're interviewing for and you want this job to some level, maybe it's your dream job, maybe it's um, seems good enough. Um, and, I think you kind of have to gauge for yourself a lot of times, like how much extra time you're willing to spend. Um, I've definitely spent way too much time on take home interviews. I think that's one of the downfalls of them and it can really end up taking up your time. But when you're really excited about a job opportunity, it's hard not to put everything into it. So I think just like know what the company expects from you, know, you know, what you have going on in your personal life. Maybe you need to set strong boundaries. And we're going to talk a little bit later about like if you don't finish the challenge, like strategies for how to how to deal with that and how to present that to a company. Um, and some are more strictly timed as well. I I technically have a take home once that they they timed how long you were like in um, the code pen or whatever. And uh, so I had two hours, and that's that's all you get. And when that happens, then that's all you got, and you don't have the the worry about having to spend a ton of extra time. Um, some of them you'll start from scratch, which is probably something you're very familiar with at this point. Um, and some of them they'll they'll put in a basic, basic to moderate framework for you. So there'll be a little bit, um, a little bit of code already in there. And sometimes part of the challenge is having to navigate that code base, which I think is a really good example of like what you'll probably realistically be doing in your job. So sometimes you might need to figure out how to make, you know, components, multiple pages or components interact with each other. And those are already built out in there and they just want to see, you know, how you transfer data from one page to another or something like that. So there's a couple different ways um, that could go. Um, you could be following a design spec. They could send you kind of a screenshot, like we want it to look like this, make it look exactly like this, and that will be the challenge. Or they could give you very little information and say like, display the data from this API. And they, in that case, they also wanna see like how you display it on the page. Maybe that's, they're more interested in your experience with like UX or they wanna see some CSS. Um, Sometimes they'll have you create a command line tool. I've never had to do that. Like, I'm very happy about that because I have no idea how, but if, you know, someone asked me to in a coding challenge, I'd be Googling that and figuring it out. So I think there's like a variety of ways in which they could test you. Hopefully it's pretty relevant to the job you've applied for. I will say that it code challenges are not always super relevant to the job you've applied for, but Unfortunately, that's that's the world we're in and you just got to take it as a learning experience and do the best you can. 
Um, I also have a lot of faith that you'll end up where you're supposed to end up. And these, these tests and challenges really like help place you there. Um, so we already talked a little bit about possibility of using CodePen, um, GitHub, which is what y'all are gonna work on. That's for me the most common is GitHub. So I can like pull down um, the code and work on my own setup, which I love because it can be very uncomfortable to code in someone else's setup. Um, I've found that they're often done somewhere in the middle of the process. Um, I think some of the bigger um, companies, they'll do technical interviews right out the gate, but those aren't usually take homes. They'll usually be like a, um, what do you call it, like elite code or hacker rank or something. And then, um, or you'll have maybe an interview with HR or a manager, um, and then you'll have a take home challenge and then a follow up after that. That's, I don't think a take home is ever really the last uh, interview. There's usually a follow up after that where you discuss your code with your team or the manager. Um, and so, yeah. And then we've already talked a little bit about the why, but I think like it's easy to think that you're just like, you know, you're showing off your code. But I think with a take home, you have the ability to show up a lot more than that, like design skills and comments and um, thought process. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about all these on the next slide, um, but it can also provide a discussion point for your next interview. So I think as most companies, if you do a take home, someone will ask you about it in the next interview, whether it's to walk you through it, um, sometimes I've had a take home be a jumping off point for a live coding session next interview where they'll ask you to add to what you made in the, the take home. Um, and I think that's pretty cool because then it's not as much like mystery of like, oh my gosh, what, what am I going to be working with? Like, what code am I going to write? You've already been thinking about this code for a while. Um, any questions yet? So um, about a couple other things that you can show off with a take home. Um, so I think of this as how to get bonus points. So all of this I think is pretty optional. I would say always add a readme pretty much. But um, other than that, I think these things are pretty optional. It's gonna depend on how much time you have, how much time they've given you, what, what the job is really. Um, like if you're applying for a back end role, like you don't, probably have to spend a ton of time like making it pretty and adding a bunch of CSS. That might not be something that they care about as much, but if you're applying for a front end role, that might be something you wanna spend a lot of time on. Um, so first of all, the readme. I feel like this is a super important thing to add to a take home assignment. And if you have the ability to, if it's a code pen, you probably don't, but if it's in GitHub or something like that, you can add a readme. Um, I've heard from a lot of companies too that they feel that they weigh this super heavily, that they want to see like they want to see you talk about what you've done basically. And this can be way, even though you can't, you know, you're not talking in the interview about it yet. Um, this can be a way for you to communicate a lot. Um, so first of all, you can in the readme, these are things you could add. You don't have to add them all. Um, you can talk about instructions for running the app, even if that, that's just a little section like run NPM start. Um, it's kind of nice to just have it there and clear and it shows that, you know, you're thinking about the person on the other side who's trying to run your app. If there's any special instructions, um, like, oh, you, if you run into this problem, then you might want to try and do this. That can be great to show that you've thought about all that stuff. Um, future improvements um, or plans, and this can be for features or performance. I think this is one of the coolest things to talk about in a readme because you built, you spent some time building something and the chances are you could have spent like 90 more hours on it, at least like, like you, maybe you made an MVP, maybe this could be an entire company and there could be an entire team working on it, but chances are you didn't build something out to a hundred percent where you're like, there is no way this could ever be better. It's the best thing ever. Um, so one thing to talk about is showing that you that you know that that you're like you know I spent this much time on it but I think if I would have had more time like like one of the take home assignments I did was showing um, food trucks in San Francisco and it was like a map and it showed the food trucks and 
I wanted to call, I was like, if I had more time, I would have called a separate API and I would have wanted to list the menu items on each of the food trucks, you know, or something like that. That, that was just totally out of scope of the take home. Or you could say like, you know what, I didn't, this could be a place where you can say, I didn't have time to totally finish the assignment. Like I didn't have time to, you know, like for the, the take home that y'all are doing for the uppercase and the lowercase, you could say, you know, I didn't actually have time to implement the uppercase, but, but I'm aware of that. And the way I think I would go forward and then you could kind of write some kind of pseudo code notes about how, how you showing that you've thought about it and that if you had more time, you would know what step to take next to continue on with the project. And I think that's really valuable. Um, you can also talk about any troubleshooting you did with the project. Um, I, in my recent take home challenge with the job I have now, I think I spent like four hours battling a cores error that ended up like going away for no reason. And so I was like, that is really annoying. I wasted a ton of time on an error that I think was like something on their side with how they built it, but then it just kind of like faded away. But I was like, you know what? I want them to know that I did that. And I want them to know that I, what steps I took to try and solve that error. So I told them about, you know, things I looked into, um, ways that I tried to, you know, turn off certain plugins or, or you know, use fetch a different way. Um, and I just kind of write, wrote way too much about all the things that, that I encountered with that error. Just... I think it was maybe for my own sake, just to be like, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't spend four hours on this for nothing, but I, they commented that on my interview after that, they're like, I really like that you like went into detail on how you troubleshoot. It shows us how, when you hit problems that you don't understand, like it shows us how you move forward and that you didn't get frustrated and stuck. You just like kept going. Um, Testing, you can write about testing, especially if you didn't have time to write any tests. Um, I've often run out of time in take home interviews and haven't written any tests. Um, I will also say that I've done that and still gotten the job. Like it's not a, I think even if they say it's a nice to have, like the main thing that I've seen is that they want to know that you can think about how to write tests. So even if it's writing, you make a file for testing in your code and you write a bunch of comments, that's great. Or if you write it in the readme and you say like, if I would have had time, like I would have written a test to put in, like in the case of the um, collab lab take home, I would put in um, different kinds of characters and write a test for that, like an asterisk or quotes. And I would see, and I wanna make sure that that doesn't break my app. And just to write that shows um, the reader that you're taking time to think about edge cases um, and that you just think about testing in general, which is always good. Um, if you're passionate about accessibility or, or if you just know that it matters, I think that's it's a great way to address that in the readme and say like, how accessible is your app currently? If you had more time, how would you make it more accessible? Um, and then one fun thing I've done before too, is just add a little about me section, just write like, hey, like I'm Caitlin, I like dogs and coffee and you know, whatever. And it just adds a little personality and it's, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Um, so other than that, I think adding another thing to generally do in your code is to be generous with your comments. Um, this will help them see your thought process, but it'll also help you if you need to go back through your code and talk to them about it. I have definitely had times where I'm like, why did I write that code? And then I read my comment and I'm like, yes, that is why I can tell you exactly why I did it that way. And it's really helpful because you'll, you'll forget pretty easily. I'm always amazed at how quickly I forget the code I write. Um, and it'll really help them understand why you made certain decisions or, you know, if you just want to add clarity around like an else if statement, say like just writing it out in plain English. Um, it just shows that you clearly understand what you've done. And then styling. I always have fun with styling. I, I generally do some because I think it's fun and I love front endy things and I like things being pretty. Um, it, again, this totally depends on the job and your interests. Um, if it's not a requirement, it's totally if you have time and if you want to. But um, 
I think it can help set you apart, especially if there's a bunch of people doing a very similar take home challenge. If you put some effort into styling, then um, you could really help yourself stand out. Okay, I'm gonna pause for questions again. <laughs> All right, if you have more, we can talk about it at the end. So the Collab Lab Challenge. So you are going to be working on a text formatter. Um, you're going to take uh, the source code for an app and it'll take a string of text and either convert it to all lowercase or all uppercase characters. So part of this is already built out for you and there is a GitHub with that. Um, and we're gonna walk through it in a second and then you're gonna add the functionality. So an example of this is if you put this text into the editor in the top box up here, this obviously is a mix of capitals and lowercase, um, then, and you submit it for uppercase, you would expect to see this output, the whole string in uppercase. And if you click a button to see it in lowercase, then you would expect to see all the letters in lowercase. So that's pretty much the functionality of what you're gonna be building. So how is CollabLab going to evaluate um, how you've done? First of all, uh, correctness. Does it, do you, did you follow the instructions? Like, how is it working? Is it working as you expect to see it? Um, code quality. Is your code readable? I would also say comments in here. Um, is it well-structured? Um, how, yeah, what, how are you, How's your code look basically? How do we feel about it? Um, and then style, does it follow the stylistic conventions of the language, indentation, capitalization, et cetera? So those are gonna be some of the things that are gonna use, be used to evaluate. So this should take no more than two hours. If it does, um, please reach out, be noisy in the channel um, or reach out specifically to one of your people um, I'm not sure who they are, but I'm sure you have a person in your cohort or Stacy, and just say, you know, this is where I'm at and kind of explain, and they can help you figure out how to move forward or how to just kind of wrap it up and put a bow on what you have. And also, if you don't finish it in two hours, you are in a very good company. Like I said, I have definitely not um, finished the take home in the allotted time. And I think it's, that's fine. I think a lot of times they don't expect you to finish. They wanna see how far you can get, how much you can do. So if you don't finish, that's fine. Just reach out and someone will chat with you about that. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so now we will go to the GitHub. So all of you should have a link to the take home assignment in the GitHub and there's great instructions right here um, about how to fork the project and clone it and then get it up and running. Um, we're going to pseudo walk through that today. I actually got it set up earlier because of my local environment. I had some funky things that I had to do extra stuff with. I didn't want to be too confusing, um, but let's go through it. So first of all, I have a Mac, so I like using the terminal for this. Um, and I'm going to go back here to GitHub. I have the, the link here, the HTTPS copied. I'm going to go into my projects folder and get clone that. Normally I would press enter and it would clone, but I've already done this. So I'm not going to. Um, instead I'm going to, once you clone it, then you're going to go into the project. I'm in the take home assignment project and I want to open it up in VS Code. Woohoo, we're running. So in the um, GitHub, it says to run npm install and npm start. I think Mindy had the same issue that I did. When I ran that, I did hit an error. So what I am doing is just running them separately. So just running npm install. And then once that's finished, I will run npm start. 
separately. When you see these double ands, you can usually separate them. I often do just because I still feel like I get newbie a lot of the time and I like to make sure one thing works and then go on to the next. So NPM start, hope this opens up. It did on my other screen. Hold on a sec. <laughs> All right. Woohoo, we're in business. So um, this is what you should see when you first clone the project. Um, there's some example text in there. If you submit it, it'll say your formatted text will go here. So this is the this is what you need to do is make it so that when one of these radio buttons is selected, you see the translated text like we were looking at before. Um, any questions about this setup so far? So in the repo, once you have this up and running, uh, the main area that you're going to be changing code is in the source folder. So if you open the source folder, you'll see um, your app.js and this has your format and text will go here. We just saw that, um, the text to be converted. And then you have your CSS file, um, an index.js, which you may or may not end up touching. And you might end up writing all your code in the app.js or you might end up adding new files. It's kind of up to you. Um, you can you know, do whatever you feel, whatever you feel like you're comfortable with, best practices, whatever. Um, I think that's the main thing to say on the project. Stacy, do you have anything to add? No, this is great. I hope it makes sense to y'all. We've gone through several iterations of kind of shaving scope on this to make it really fit into that two hour window. But again, if it doesn't, applying what Chris was saying earlier is really helpful. Just make sure that in there you've documented what you're doing, maybe leave some to do's if you didn't quite get finished. And whenever you submit it to your mentor during your technical interview, just let them know I didn't quite get it working. Here were the bugs I was running into. Here were the things I tried, but I um, hit the time limit. And so I wanted to turn it in and we can discuss this more on our technical interview or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's in here. If you go into the intro to the take home assignment uh, GitHub repo for Career Lab, you'll see somebody that you are paired with to kick off the uh, take home assignment. And so because like it's time crunch and Career Lab is kind of, you know, people everywhere, you know, um, Oh, Mandy, your message went to me instead of high level. Anyway, uh, just about those beautiful, no worries. Caitlin, she was mentioning your beautiful uh, color coding like indents on your oh. editor. So beautiful. Yeah. I was thinking that exact same thing, Mandy. I was like, oh, I love that theme. It's so <laughs> the rainbow. <laughs> Too many colors. But yeah. So you're paired up with somebody and you'll each need your own project. So just like Caitlin did, you'll each want to do that. Um, but you can just get together to talk through the approach to it or where you might add code or talk if you have any ideas about what to do. Um, if you can't pair up with that person, your time doesn't you know, overlap or whatever, just be really loud in the channel because you know, as we saw like Jennifer and Andrea and I you doing the other day, it's like, there's somebody who will collaborate with you. If nobody will, I'm happy to do it myself. Um, but it's just nice to kind of get on with something and talk about like, okay, how would you approach this? Would you start with, let's write out, you know, in the readme or in a new file, our approach to what we're doing, or, you know, just kind of kick it off and have a conversation because it's always fun to have somebody to collaborate with. Then you'll go off on your own, you'll finish it, and then send it immediately to your technical mock interviewers as soon as you get it done, because they'll probably want to take a look and, you know, form some questions around it or see what direction they might take your technical interview in. Jennifer, I don't know if you're the only one to be in this situation, so I'm just going to say it in case anybody else is in the same situation. I don't think I made it clear that the take home assignment we would start today and needed to be done before your technical mock interview because it's what you'd be interviewed on. So if your mock interview is like really soon, Jennifer's is in like an hour, I think, or maybe even half an hour, um, either try and reschedule that so that you can have the real like authentic experience that we we're trying to recreate. Or if you can't, just get on with your interviewer because these are all just collab lab mentors. And so it's very casual. They're totally there to just do whatever you need to feel more confident in your interview process. So if you get on with 
your mock interviewer and you haven't done the take home assignment, still take that time with that person because it's somebody who has really valuable insight on interviewing. Um, and ask them questions or just have them, you know, kind of spitball with you and give you questions or talk through some concepts that you might come across. Just use their time to get more familiar with technical mock interviewing. Um, and again, if you, if this week goes by and you're like, hey, I want another technical mock interview, be really loud about it because we have so many people who want you to succeed and want to help you um, and we're totally here for you. So any questions on the take home assignment or the technical mock interview piece of career lab? All right, okay. Caitlin, did you have anything else on this? I can't remember what, um, how far this Not on go. this, but we have some strategies to talk oh, about. Perfect, yes, these are great. Wait, how yes. can we find who we paired with for the Tangle assignment? It's on the session doc for the one that we're in right now, the intro to the take home assignment at the bottom, you'll be paired up. I think there's one group with three because there was an uneven number. But again, if you have trouble meeting with that person, um, just be loud in the chat and or Slack and we'll find somebody to pair with. If you feel like you, you know, you don't have time, but you don't really need to or want to, that's fine too, like work solo, just let your partner know so that they can go find another partner too. Okay, Caitlin. Cool, um, so this is the last slide. Um, some tips and strategies for creating your take home. When you get it, it can be kind of overwhelming. Sometimes I'll read a take home and be like, I got this, like in the bag, and then I'll get overwhelmed later. Um, or sometimes I read it, I'm like, how am I ever going to do this? This feels low key impossible. Um, and like with any code challenge that gets handed to you where you feel like it's low key impossible, which has happened to me probably hundreds of times already. Um, there's a couple ways to attack it. And maybe you have some personal ideas of how to do that, um, but we can talk about some here too. Um, so first of all, a working solution is better than an elegant solution. I always live by the idea of make it work and then make it pretty. Um, so if you have gotten to the point where you can make it work and you're at time or you're even over time, um, I think that's great. I, so I also want to sidebar on the idea of comments being controversial at the end of this, but I'm going to continue saying what I think, um, which is that if you do something that you're like, this works, but it's not pretty, I would encourage you to leave a comment about it or write about it in the readme. Like, I'm aware that, you know, maybe this is like three nested if statements within each other, and that's not great, but it works. And this is, you know, the solution I got to in the time that I was given. Um, breaking it down into smaller pieces is always the best. This is like, feels like what I live by. Um, so if you have this big thing that you have to work on where you're making multiple API calls and you're displaying them on a couple different pages, just do the fetch call and see what you're getting back. See how the data looks. Like you don't want to be, you know, taking too many steps and then being like, why isn't, you know, the name of this national park printing on the page? Like, is the data even coming back? from that call in the way that you would expect it to. Um, just do, if you can just find the first thing that you could possibly do in the assignment and and get it working, then you can make sure, it's just gonna be so much easier to debug that way so that when you hit a problem, you're like, okay, well, I know the data is coming through. I know it's coming through in this function. So if I'm not seeing what I'm expecting to on the page, then it's gotta be something in between there. And it just may, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So break it down into pieces. Um, use a problem solving strategy like PDAC. Um, I, I will say that Mindy is so good at explaining this and I was gonna take a whack at it, but I also think that she just has a great um, talk on the Collab Lab page. If you go to the Tech Talks, Mindy has a whole talk about PDAC in there. And she is just like the queen of this problem solving strategy. And I think it's a really good one to use. So. I would say, suggest that when y'all have some free time, you go into that and take a look. Another thing that I often do, I mean, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but hey, it's coding, so that's why you repeat yourself sometimes, um, is I will often go through and pseudocode, which is basically writing comments of what I want to do and where I want to do it. So maybe I know that I wanna fetch, make my fetch call 
on this page in this component. And then I know I wanna print some data later, further down the page. And then in a different page, I want to, um, you know, pass Warn React, pass props over and, and pull data in over there. I might just go in and write all the comments for that. It'll help me feel more organized. And as I go through steps, I don't lose my train of thought of like, oh, what was I gonna do next? And, and it also helps me feel less overwhelmed. Like it feels a lot easier for me to write pseudo code and be like, okay, I know how to say what I want to do. Um, maybe I don't know how to code it yet. Maybe I don't know what algorithm to choose. It's scary, but I know how to say what I want to do. And for me, just having one step done of like putting my thought process out there can really help me move over that hurdle of moving forward and moving past some of that fear a lot of the times. Um, so some Collab Lab specific tips. Uh, work with your partner. You're given a partner. I think that's great. You're going to pair a lot in your career. So work with your partner. Enjoy it. Um, be noisy in Slack. Ask a lot of questions. Reach out if you need help. If you're stuck, like don't spend four hours stuck on a course error like I did. Um, <laughs> you have a whole team here of people here to help you. So take advantage of that. Um, if you're asking for help, send a link um, to your own fork and kind of share um, oh, share it with the interview when you're done. But if you're also stuck, you can also share the code that you've pushed up so far and that'll help people kind of help you debug. And then yes, share it with your interview when you're all done. And I think that's it. You got this. <laughs> you totally got this. It's going to be great. You're all going to do wonderfully. And mm -hmm. if you mess up, that's fine. It's a very safe space to fail at Collab Lab and gives you more of what you need so that when you go out and do it for real, you're prepared and you're like, I'm not going to make that mistake again. So yes. Any final questions on any of this? I was going to talk to the um, in the chat, I was reading about oh, comments. And I think that. that is so interesting that comments are controversial. I don't I don't think I really knew that. I don't think anyone's ever said to me, like, write fewer comments, be less descriptive. Um, so I think that's interesting. I uh, believe it, I guess. Everything's controversial in tech, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> there's this like there's this idea that like your code should be self documenting. Like if you're using proper naming and writing good code, we shouldn't need comments. And so yeah. some people like to get on their high horse and be like, you don't need comments. Comments should never be relevant, but comments are always relevant. And like, if you're gonna write them in your real working space, really make them focus on the why something is there, not the what it does. Cause that's the self-documenting part. Like you should be able to tell what your code, what your code is doing by looking at it. You might not know why it's there, so mm -hmm. job, focus on the why in those comments, but in an in interview situation, in a take home assignment or a live coding session, I think fill it full of comments because this is your chance to really communicate and over communicate so people understand what you know and where you might get stuck and where you can really shine. So I think in this situation, overload on comments. Um, if somebody has a problem with it, then they're the problem probably. Um, yeah, that would but, make me nervous a little bit. Yeah. Like if someone was like, I don't want, I mean, I am coming from a place, my last job, my, the tech lead on my team commented literally everything. And at first I was like, that is a little much. Like there's the comments are like half the file. But as I like got used to working there, I was like, this is so great. Oh, like so I, like if I'm ever wondering about, because like, yes, code should be in theory, like perfectly written all the time by everyone and should still be perfectly understandable 10 years later. But like, that's just not the case. And so if there's no. ever code that you're wondering about, you can like see the thought process behind it or what it's intended to do. If it's not working, how it's intended to be working. If there's a bug, you can see what was intended there and then where the discrepancy is. So, I mean, that's exactly. one, one woman's opinion. Apparently it's not a universal one, but I think like you can, you know, take what we've said and know how you feel about communication. If you're a big communicator, then that's one way to show it is in comments. Yeah. And if you're like, if you are more on the side of code speak for itself, then follow your heart. Follow your heart. <laughs> yes, I love that. Cool. Well, with that, I will close this room down. I'm going to share all of these links in Slack for anybody who wasn't able to make it to this session. 
it might take me a little while because I got to like get my kids home and get dinner and things done. But after that, they will all be there for everybody to see. Um, again, let us know if you have questions, comments, or concerns. I love all the feedback I've been getting about this round of Career Lab. So keep that coming. I want to make it even better for the next round of people who come through. So share, share, share. And good luck. I don't know. I think that's it. Yeah. Y'all are going to do great. You're totally going to rock it. Cool. All right. Well, have a beautiful evening, afternoon. I guess if you joined us in your, in our Europe Africa cohort midnight. Um, but we will see you in Slack. Okay. All right. Bye, friends. Bye. See you around.